Hi, and welcome to that second part of uh, Castle Story for the Pathfinding. You probably, if you haven't seen the previous video, by the way, I strongly encourage you to go and watch it. It'll give you a better context of what we're uh, we're going to talk today, which is well, the intricacies of our pathfinding solution we uh, we developed uh, in the well in the past months. Um, so, in the first video, one of the big questions we wanted to answer is: Is there a path, and how important that question is for Castle Story? Um, just to put you back into wha what we showed you last uh, in the last video. Here's our solution on what we call Big Island here. We try to test it and we see with Pathfind in, in crazy fast iterations like hundreds or it was 5,000 faster anyways than regular A star, much faster. So how did it, uh, how did it do that? That's what we're going to cover today. Um, to Go back again as to why this is it, this is complicated. Just to give you an idea, our game heavily centers on the fact that we're trying to block things from the path all the time. For example, uh, here we have a Bricktron enclosed in in uh, in two walls where no corruptrons can actually reach him. As you can see, there's no doors, no entrance, and no nothing. So if you actually do a pathfinding, remember like I did in the previous video, you would end up having to search the whole freaking map just to know if there's a path to get there or not, which is clearly not <laughs> viable. Same thing goes for that little log behind that archer. There, there's no direct path here to get to that log. So what are we gonna do? Well, we'll be stuck yet again, pathing everywhere. This clearly doesn't work. So what do we do in that case? What we've been using in our case is what we call search scope limitation. We limit the scope of our search. This way, up to one point, you're like, ah, you know what, I searched for 5,000 voxels. For sure, there's no path to it. It is actually right, usually. But the bigger your island is, <laughs> the, the, more the more false negatives you guys will get. Because at one point, if you click at the, all, the um, edge of the, of the map, well, it's the path is almost more than 5,000 voxels, so <laughs> you can't even find a path anyway with search scope limitation. So anyways, this solution doesn't scale. That's my point. So how did we do that? Well, we went back to the drawing board and with a nice, uh, with nice and neat solution developed by Benoit, which I mentioned in the previous, uh, in the previous video. So to give you an idea how we figured that solution, well, our first idea was our issue is, clear, is clearly the question, is there a path? Okay, starting from that, what did we do? Well, let's do a basic grid uh, image so you guys can figure it out. We did. We figured that if we actually cluster all the uh, nodes together, we'd get a situation where we could tell if they're connected or not. So these blue lines here are walls and the rest is walkable area, okay? So if you color them, every node that are connected as you can see, you can directly say if their nodes are connected through them, even if they're really far away or not. For example, if you take that node here and that node over there, well, you know they're connected. The green one and the blue one are not connected. So this works pretty well to know there's a path, of course. I mean, it's pretty much direct. You question one, question the other, job's done. <laughs> In practice, it actually can't work quite well for Castle Story because first, <laughs> uh, it doesn't give us a path anyways, just and just tells us there's a path, which is okay in, in by itself, but it's not enough. And But the second and real problem is if we create a small wall here, imagine this is the whole island, okay? And we create a small wall here. We'll need to recalculate this whole freaking island if we just split that wall here with that part of the island done and the other part of the island needs to be scanned. This, <laughs> this makes it totally unviable for islands like Big Island. So, of course, Clustering is just a naive, simple solution, but th that gives us a direction. We really like the fact that we could answer in w directly if there was a path or not. So back to the drawing board, phase two. So what do we do now? Okay, um, limit the size of the clusters, right? That should work correctly. And actually, it was a pretty neat uh, solution. This, again, is a picture, a bit small, I, I, I agree, but this is a, an island which we divided clusters with the one you see which are transparent are completely pathable areas and the one with yellow are areas which are more ambiguous because there's a ledge inside it. If I'm just going to show you the uh, the regular island without the data. Oh, I'm just going to remove that. It's the same island here, which is, by the way, a A star trap, but I won't go into details. So this is the same image we saw previously in that picture. So 
Was this solution good? Well, it, had, it did have some pros. I mean, at one point, you could still tell pretty fast if there was a path because you only need to pathfind a little amount of voxel. Instead of path by, pathfinding through, like, what, 100,000 voxels, it's only, what, 60, 70, 80, 90 in theory. Because in practice, once you get to those ledges here, it gets a lot more complicated. You need to actually dive into those clusters and ask every individual voxels. Okay, that doesn't really work, fine. I mean, what could we do for a solution for that? Well, our first solution was yes, diving inside them, not very real fun. We could have variable sizes then. Just vary, vary the size of the clusters and you should be okay. Again, it is true. Here's a picture. We actually did this in our older system where we varied the size of the clusters, which is good, but it is clearly not enough and I'll show you why because in Big Island, our islands are so varied in size that you can never tell, never have a real huge cluster like this. And pathfinding will end up being like this. What we're seeing here is that there's a block, which is in an open area. It goes real fast here, but then you need to dive in deeper and smaller and smaller areas. And at one point, you lose almost all the advantages of your hierarchy for your uh, your uh, clusters of uh, of path nodes. So, was it enough? Was the question well, kind of? I mean, we had like what 15, 20 uh, times the advantage of our regular pathfinding, but it's nowhere near the scale of what we've got now, which is 5,000. So, how did we we uh, handle that? 5,000 in good cases, of course. But um, how did we handle that? Well, that's where the 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 neat solution from Benoit came in. Bear with me because this is going to be a bit more complicated, okay, guys? So here's our the same island we had previously, okay? If we boo, if we move our uh, our objects, you'll see there we have path findings, which are which these are the same clusters we had previously. The reasoning behind the solution was this: we decided, hey, we're already pathfinding through clusters. What if? we could make clusters of clusters and then clusters of clusters again and then clusters and have bigger and bigger and bigger clusters up to one point we have what I call a, a LOD system of clusters. So let's say we have a huge area. Well, you could have in two cubes and say, hey, are you guys related or not? See, because you have a cluster of clusters, you can answer with that huge cluster in the top. The issue you'll get though, if you remember, we have paths that are not accessible. I'll try to remove the, the pathing data so you can see. Remember this whole area, I know it's not that clear, but this whole area is a ledge where it's technically not reachable, okay? So if we could put back the path, well, I'm not inside the cube. You'll see, it'll notice there's a path in here, but in reality, there's more than one cluster. There's three clusters embedded inside themselves. And I wanna show you, just to show you how it works, that's how we could use the same clusters yet in have them in separate, you could say in separate uh, cubes at the same time to do the pathfinding. So, give me a, let me, here's four, is that good? So, in theory, as you can see, if we have four, this voxel here, notice how we have an area walkable over here, an area walkable over here, an area walkable over here. Both are technically not related because they're in different sections. At this size of cluster, we don't know if they're related or not. So if I show you the debug data, we should technically see three big cubes overlapping one each other. And that's what we're gonna try here. So let's ask the debug data, debug, thank you. Is it drawn yet? Come on, be nice with me. Hmm. Oh, there it is. Sorry, it was disabled. <laughs> My bad. Okay. So if I remove, I'll remove the path here. Sorry. Uh, yeah. So if I remove the first cube, there, we. I removed one. There should be three, remember, because there are three areas that are not reachable. Let's remove the second cube. Yep. And let's remove the third cube. There should be no more cubes now. And there are none. So what I'm showing you here is we somehow clustered areas that are together. And if I take a bigger cube at one point, they'll merge back together because they're technically reach, both sides here are reachable. So if we have a huge cube taking all the island, well, we would have technically three. One for the flat part of the islands 
and two other cubes for each island in big size. So a bit complex, I agree, but that may, that's the magic of the system. That's where it all goes because basically we can just go higher and higher cubes and just answer the question, hey, do you guys share a same cube of a cluster, if you could say, of pathing? Yes. Well, that means there is a path. So end of the hardest part now goes to the fun, the most fun part, which is how do you do a path with all that data now, right? Okay, let's go through it because if you remember, we'll have clusters, but we don't get data. If we go into this here, let me just get you to draw it again. Let's move, I don't know, from here to here. So this technically doesn't give you a detailed path. It gives you what I call a course path. Course as in it is good, but it is not exactly detailed. You need voxel by voxel for your characters, it, or else it doesn't work. What we did was a simply unrolling system of our path. By unrolling, I mean, if you look at it, I'm just going to start selecting. I'll zoom in because to see it better. We can technically unroll the path. And as a character advances, we actually resolve the concrete path. This way, you get to know what are the details of the path when you need it. You don't need to compute the whole path right at the beginning. You don't need to know what, what are the intricacies of the past. You'll solve them later. That saves up a bunch of resources for the game because instead of doing everything like what, a half a millisecond, a millisecond, two milliseconds where you're just hammering the CPU, you're doing it on a scope of five minutes. I mean, you don't care in five minutes. It's how, even if it takes maybe 10% more, who cares? Under five minutes, almost nothing. It's going to be transparent, you could say, for the pathfinding. So this covers how the pathfinding actually works. The one last thing I want to cover with you guys is the intricacies of pathfinding for Castle Story. Because in a way, um, a lot of pathfinding solutions usually assume there's some kind of symmetry. That if you can go uh, right this way, you could actually go left also. In Castle Story, it's not actually true. And I suppose for a lot of games too. But just to give you a quick example of this issue, let's go back to our castle here. So as you can see, I'll enable the path drawer just so we can see it. There you go. So I have a, a um, where is it? I have well, a path located somewhere here. I think it's inside the castle, not exactly sure. I'll just go and check it to be sure. It's from, let's just move it a bit over here. There you go. Okay, that's what I wanted. Okay, so we have a path starting over here and going through there, okay? All dandy, all good, all beautiful. What happens if I block the path? Just so you guys can see the dynamic aspect of this pathfinding. I block the path here. Yay, it's actually going to resolve. By the way, it takes longer <laughs> drawing the path than resolving the path, just so you know. <laughs> That's kind of the irony of the situation. Anyways, um, so we path set up another cube. There, it's actually going to take the, the bridge now. Now, the interesting aspect is there's no path, right? This way. What if we put a stairs? Stairs would make it pathable. So let's put down stairs. Just one stair here for the... All right, there we go. Now, see, it walks through the stairs to the area. This is all fine and dandy. But technically, what happens if there's the guy tries to go inside the castle, right? Because if he has a resource on his back, he can't walk, he can't walk back in. So I'm going to flip the direction here by pressing. And see, he, he'll have to path fine on the other side. So here you can notice the symmetry. He can go from up here to down there, but he actually can go from down there to up here with a resource. And that complicates a lot of our pathing issues for Castle Story. That's, that's what I meant by, you know, symmetries and, and complications for implementing pathfinding. That was a kind of intricacy of gameplay we, it was added. Same thing with character blocking for local, local avoidance and stuff like that. So this gives you a quick overview on, of uh, how we implemented our solution for pathfinding i hope you guys were interested uh, i we had a lot of fun and credits again to benoit for uh figuring out this nice nice and neat solution for our game <laughs>